Welcome back everyone, it's me Matt, thank you so much for joining me today. Now, we're talking about something a little different on the channel today. Uh, once again, a rhetorical sense or something that's more, I guess, out of the norm when it comes to military equipment and hardware. Mechs, or mechanized robotic walkers, I guess, are something that seems to come across on my channel for questions and requests to do videos a lot. You know, futuristic type equipment, what could it be, how does it work, and could it be something feasible for the future? And what I decided to do is instead of going to the in-depths of why mechs are good or not good, is to talk about the mechs that I would love to actually be able to use uh, on a battlefield if they were available to me. You know, there's a lot of different designs and concepts and sci-fi fantasy uh, equipment out there that I actually want to just showcase and look at and say actually that would be so cool and some of my reasoning as to why I would pick some of these vehicles and why I would pick obviously not some of these vehicles when I was young I used to play on Mech Warrior I loved Mech Warrior it was a great game uh, and it was a lot of fun to play and it got my mind wondering in the future of you know wonder if these things could be used could they be actually utilized in battle and when I look at some of the designs and the games out there today they're fascinating it's freaking cool seeing all these kind of capabilities that they could do you know uh, anti-armor and anti-mech i guess or infantry support this is a whole host and you know i'm just skimming the surface of what this subject could be talking about but i don't want to go too deep we'll probably break this kind of video up into a few different videos in the future but for today we're just gonna have some fun and talk about some of these designs that are existing out there and just talk about what i think about them but before we go any further i do want to say that this video is brought to you by war robots sponsorship today thank you so much for sponsoring me today war robots i do thoroughly actually enjoy your game i play it quite often on my cell phone now war robots is an action tactical shooter six by six in real time uh, you're able to fill your hangar with some of the most unique bots out there with about 60 different types and variants of them and the great thing about this game is the weapons that you can shove on there i actually thoroughly enjoy spraying down 30 caliber rounds all over the place with brass ejecting out the side of uh, rotary guns or the big old heavy guns that punch the brass out the back it's actually one of the most cool features of the game is you know not just the firepower and the fighting it's just watching the empty brass pour out the side of these weapons i don't know it's just something that i like <laughs> um you can have rail guns machine guns sonic weapons rockets flamethrowers it's very detailed very enjoyable the graphics are fantastic on this game i play it quite often on my cell phone when kind of just chilling out waiting for things to go you can play with a team or if you want to play with me you can there's going to be no problem with matchmaking since there's a 150 million player worldwide base which is really really cool if you're a solo mode gamer, you can try the arena or free-for-all mode, which allows you to pretty much destroy everything, and the game's constantly being updated. If you want to get involved in playing this game, guys, please go check out the QR code, which is really going to be useful for you getting an additional feature with a starter pack, including a robot and a weapon, a unique skin, 100 gold, and 50,000 silver. And the first 1,000 people who download the game via my special little link We'll also get a really cool flamethrower to destroy your enemies and attach to your own mech. As I mentioned before, my main fun feature of this game is the empty brass being ejected out of the guns and the capability of using shields, which is something a little different when you're talking about mechanized equipment being able to defend itself. People talk about their legs being blown off or their arms being blown off, but an equipment that can hold a heavy-duty shield in a place of wherever it wants to go would make a lot of sense, actually, for defending itself, which is why I think this game really appeals to me, because it uses a little bit different of the mech thinking instead of just head-on, head-on mech attack. It actually uses some different capabilities like flight or shields, which puts a little bit of a change on what you traditionally would think a mech warfare being like. So I actually really enjoy playing this game in that kind of capability where you can either sneak up on someone or jump over the top of a building and all of a sudden turn from an airborne unit into a massive great titan that sits in front of a target and just can absolutely annihilate it. So it's a lot of fun. If you do want to go though, check it out, guys, please make sure you go and check out that QR code and go to the description box below to download the game. Hopefully I'll see you in game. So first up, we're going to talk about the GDI Walker from Tiberian Sun. If you've ever played the Tiberian Sun series from Command & Conquer, they're a lot of fun. It was a great game, but the cinematics is what really made these games for me as a kid. I used to love watching the mechs coming towards these sort of Gatling gun rotary cannon type. And this is where I think, you know, I would love to have a unit like this that could walk maybe a little faster with two 
big old rotary cans on the side, almost like the uh, Warhammer 40k Dreadnoughts. And then you have the Titans, right? The big, powerful, looks like sort of a 105mm or 155mm cannon that's punching out one round at a time. I also loved on some of the cinematics you got for this game, the rounds actually ejecting from the, uh, or the empty casings ejecting from the gun as well. But of course, the Nod had their obelisk of light tearing open the armor. And then you have the artillery cannons from the Titans as well, sort of firing in the background. Really, really cool tech of course you know for me it's totally totally conceptual never going to actually happen but i really enjoyed it as a kid and it always sort of brought a tear to my eye watching those cinematics of the mechs being blown up next up is the avatar movies amplified mobility platform or mark 6 amp which is basically a suit designed to support infantry with a heavy cannon it has its own fuel cells and of course is designed to go all around pandora and stop all the navi and all that good stuff the really cool thing about this mech is it's fairly simplistic, right? It's basically a walking unit with a gun that is hand-carried. It's not attached to the equipment, which I find kind of useful because this thing can be used for a multitude of different uh, tasks or abilities. It's not just, hey, go shoot some stuff. This thing can actually do logistics. It can do medical support. It can do maintenance, engineering, all sorts of different things. But at the end of the day, it's designed to use that massive heavy cannon to just annihilate anything in front of it. And that big old uh, blade on the front of there gives it the capability of doing some nasty damage to any armor up close i'm not too sure what the metal would be made of but i'm sure it's not truly designed to take on infantry than it is to take on you know sort of big creatures or animals or armor that it can punch through so a really cool bit of tech Next up from the Matrix is the Armored Personnel Unit. Now, I actually really enjoyed the Matrix series, and this equipment in one of the movies just really spoke to me. It just looked amazing as they were trying to defend Zion. Uh, they apparently produced 120,000 of these units to defend uh, the uh, the breach or you know the gate that they were trying to hold off the machines from. I love this equipment because once again, uh, it is sort of an infantry man portable raw bit of kit. You know, it's really sort of getting up front with the infantry and up front with the troops those big old cannons i love the fact that the belts are strewn all over this thing the guns are just sort of slotted as if they're like you know uzi nine millimeters tilted <laughs> to the sides which is really cool but you know the cool feature about this again is just that massive amount of firepower they can produce uh the strung belts though seem like a huge inherent problem for this equipment when you're slinging around arms everywhere as brass ejecting all over the place those belts will get caught up with no problems but Overall, a really cool bit of kit, a fun little mech. I'd certainly enjoy going sort of Uzi side tilt, engaging with those guns for sure. Yes, of course, there'd be no mech video without Gypsy Danger or from the series of Pacific Rim with the Jaegers, which are designed to go kill out those horrible, horrible beasts, uh, which, you know, they did a pretty good job of overall. Uh, there's a few of them that got knocked out in the movie. But Gypsy Danger is the one that kind of stuck to the uh, the American side and did what it had to do. Cool bit of kit, uh, mainly for the most part sort of a manhandling gripping thing. This would be a heavy class uh, mech, of course, extreme heavy. You know, this is almost like a city destroyer type mech. But it does have some capabilities, you know, like a blade that it can use. Of course, these aren't going to be used in real combat. We're talking about equipment that's designed to knock out giant alien beasts. But if this thing could be designed, you know, would it be useful against military equipment of today? Yeah, yeah, I could safely say it would be. <laughs> this thing could just stomp through most things, uh, depending on the kind of armament it had. I'm sure Gypsy Danger's metal composition would be pretty rigid to uh, to stop a few 120mm Sabo rounds from an Abrams. But uh, yeah, pretty capable. So uh, a, a ridiculously sized mech, but, you know, looks pretty cool. Next up, Metal Gear. Of course, we all know of Metal Gear if you've played the Metal Gear Solid series. I loved this game as a kid, uh, playing on the PlayStation 1 with all the fancy little codes and stuff. And you always wondered, what is Metal Gear? And, you know, what does it fully look like? What's it capable of? And it's basically just a gigantic death machine with a massive great pulse cannon slash rail gun. Uh, of course, Solid Snake taking it on as, uh, as best he could. And the game was a lot of fun. It really kind of brought you into the realm of, well, what is this the ultimate weapon? Is this the ultimate thing that could be used? You don't learn too much about its capabilities in the game, especially the first one that I played. But I can tell you this much, it looks incredible and could be something more sort of along the lines of, you know, a medium to heavy class mech if it was to put, be put on the battlefield. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, we're just having some fun here. And now we're going into the realm of complete ridiculousness. The Warhammer 40k mechs, of course, the Titans and the Dreadnoughts and all the other different types of mechs that are out there. But 
the titans really are you know of course with the name inherently so absolutely huge uh and they are literally moving cities with guns on them it's incredible uh it'd be completely pointless i think in uh in combat you know and in actual reality because uh it just would just not be able to hold the amount of weight that it's pulling around and just doesn't really make any sense you know it's literally a city with guns on it on a movable mech although it looks absolutely incredible and for the lore of warhammer 40k it has the ridiculousness ticked on every box and i think it's an incredible piece of fandom next up is the district 9 bio suit also called a mech prawn <laughs> for obvious reasons uh, i loved the district 9 movie and the weapons in it were fascinating because they were so unique you know drawing and all the bullets firing them back picking up a pig and launching it at people this mech suit did it all and it took a beating too a real beating in the movie uh, and when mr wickers is stuck inside of it there, getting blasted up as his own alien i guess uh <laughs> concoction that he had been produced into it kind of locked into his central nervous system and, and it was really really unique and i love the way that it could kind of you know adapt and adjust to incoming fire in sort of a almost ninja-like capability it could it could move around weapons that are being fired at it really really cool and you know we don't see a huge amount of its firepower but it looks at some of the weapons that the aliens have in district 9 uh, are just sort of the tip of the iceberg to what they could do with some of their larger mechs so really really cool and i'd love to see if they had you know larger mechs that weren't just sort of infantry support but more sort of a you know another mech or heavier unit to destroy it would be really cool to see Next up is the more traditional looking M7 Swift from Steel Battalion, known as a US vertical tank. It basically looks like a Sherman and an M3 Stewart's been compacted together and put on a mech. I loved Steel Battalion as a game back in the day on the Xbox. It was a lot of fun, and it just made me look at the Sherman in a whole different way when you started playing in this vehicle. Steel Battalion was so much fun, uh, and kind of brought into the modern slash World War II crossover of mechs being in World War II. It was really, really cool. And I, I loved it. It was just a different way of looking at armor, you know, instead of just the traditional tracked way. Could these things be put on heavy duty hydraulic legs or motional legs that allow these vehicles to not just be tanks in the tracked sense, but also tanks in the, you know, mechanized feet or walking sense. And I always loved talking to my crew members inside there, giving my crew member a little fist bump, you know, to the Sarge and all that good stuff. Really interactive, re really, really fun. And the interior of the vehicle is what was most interesting as well. All the little gizmos and gadgets and the loading and the screens and stuff. Very primitive, like a crossover, as I said before, like a World War II slash, you know, modernized Abrams interior with a World War II Sherman interior mix. It just looked really cool and I really, really enjoyed it. In modern capability, though, probably not so much going to be useful because it's a World War II style armor with the mechanized capability. It would get knocked out just as much as a normal Sherman would. And of course, how could we forget the ATST or All Terrain Scout Transport from Star Wars? Yes, the classic Scout Transport or Scout Walker that was used almost like a chicken uh, with lasers on it uh, was a bipedal walker. It was used by ground forces, by the Galactic Empire, and terrified the old, uh, you know, Ewoks and all those little furry little buddies jumping around in the trees. I'd be terrified if it comes through the trees too. And in honesty, it does make sense, this equipment. Very simplistic, you know, a walker that could go just about anywhere. Now, the capability of this would really be speed. And in the movies, they're not fast. They're extremely slow, actually. But you'd want this to be nimble, fast, jump around and punch those lasers through armor, uh, you know, scooting around and flanking forces. That's what you want this to be. But in the movie, they don't seem like that. They seem like a medium support-based vehicle that's slow and lumpy and just doesn't make a lot of sense. If anything, they're just... A box or a tin can with a laser on that could be shot quite easily no shields of any kind and of course how could i not finish with the at 80 or all-terrain armored transport uh let's be honest this is one of the most ridiculous mechs of uh you know fandom or sci-fi or futuristic concepts out there it makes really no sense that it's so tall and so large uh, with such cumbersome legs that could just be oh maybe some ropes tied around it to knock it to the floor <laughs> but those cannons are pretty uh you know prominent and can do some severe damage but it just doesn't make any sense it really doesn't the, the whole concept just is a gigantic cow 
uh, towering above the sky that can be knocked out very easily from either the air or the ground. It just Its concept is very strange, but is one of the most famous symbols of the Empire's military might on the ground, so clearly it has to be domineering and large. I hope you enjoyed today's video, everyone. Please leave me a like, and if you want to be notified of any upcoming content in the future, click that little bell by the subscribe button. You can also check out my Patreon and my PayPal if you want to support my channel. Thanks so much, and have a great day. Bye-bye.